More than sad, it's actually scary. Low on oxygen, struggling to get much needed supplies. India's hospitals are battling a crushing coronavirus surge and Coloradans are determined to help. And so we all are doing our best to contribute what we can. No, no, excuse me. I, I asked you a question and a response. Tensions run high at Loveland City Council. Accusations one member is using a crisis for personal gain. Plus, get ready to pay more to get around. No more U-turns, no more detours. It's time for action to fix our roads. What's in the newest transportation plan? Now lawmakers plan to foot the bill. Then he went down to one knee, tried to throw the ball back in, and then he fell down again. And badly hurt while playing the game he loves. Now Coloradans are going to bat for this brave 12-year-old. 70% of all U.S. adults should have at least one dose of the vaccine by July 4th. That is the brand new goal from President Biden. By the time people gather to celebrate Independence Day, he wants to have nearly half of all adults fully vaccinated. The path forward is encouraging. COVID case numbers are dipping in the U.S. Now in India, I'm afraid it is a much different story. That country is fighting through a difficult second wave of coronavirus infections. Healthcare staff are stretched thin. More than 350,000 new cases every day. And more than 200,000 people have died from the virus there so far. And President Biden is now sending shipments of oxygen, protective gear, test kits, and other badly needed supplies to India. And for Coloradans with ties to India, this is so difficult to watch this play out and feel so powerless to do anything. As Denver 7 CB Cotton reports, now some Coloradans are banding together to make a difference and support India through this dark moment. Logging online and reading some of the international headlines, Dhruv Nambiar has never felt more connected. For me, it was always a bit more personal, a bit more like immediate, because I have family in India. Family that battled COVID-19. They thankfully recovered safely, so I'm really grateful for that. Others haven't been as lucky. Infections in the second most populous country have now surpassed 20 million, and India's average of newly confirmed cases per day has gone from over 65,000 on April 1st to about 370,000. It's honestly really terrifying. The situation of under-resourced and overcrowded hospitals has prompted the White House to pledge vaccine doses and supplies. And now a Douglas County 15 year old hopes to connect others with a way to help. I never expected it to go this big. I thought maybe we would get maybe 500, maybe 1,000 if we were lucky. So far, almost $4,000 has been raised by Nambiar's GoFundMe page. The money raised will be donated to the nonprofit Give India and its efforts to boost oxygen supply for Indians battling COVID. Other Indian Americans? Find everything on right. Holding on to gratitude too, that their loved ones overseas can stay safe. With the number of cases growing every day, I don't know how it's going to be tomorrow, how it's going to be a week later. You know, so they're trying their best to stay indoors. That uncertainty, Aurora business owner Zakarula Khan says, it draws he and others closer as they try to figure out resources they can send to family and friends. It's been really stressful. I mean, it, it's it's something where, I mean, you hear like from where they said, hey, everything is good, perfectly fine, to where it said, hey, the second wave hit us so hard that like every hour, like 150 people die. COVID variants and massive crowds that gathered earlier in the year for political or religious gatherings are thought to be causes for the spike, the aftermath, shortages of oxygen and hospital beds. It's getting bad worse day by day. Apart from from praying there's nothing else we can do and, and the other best thing we can do is contribute from our side. And that's what Nambiar hopes his GoFundMe will continue to do. You have to put yourself in their shoes and think about like what it must be like for everyone who's struggling with that situation over there. CB Cotton, Denver 7. Breaking tonight, Denver police arrested this man in connection with the death of a nine month old baby girl who died last August. Kane Gallardo is being investigated for the murder of Gianna Rosales. He is the boyfriend of Gianna's mom. Last year, Gianna's father, Anthony Rosales, spoke exclusively with Denver 7. He and Gianna's mom shared custody, and he said he had concerns about his baby's safety and reported them to police at the time, but he says his calls for action were ignored. The city medical examiner says Gianna died from blunt force injuries. Facing intense scrutiny over the rough arrest of a 73-year-old woman with dementia, the city of Loveland voted tonight to create something called a trust commission. Now the focus of tonight's city council meeting was that arrest, the disturbing video of it, and how best to rebuild trust between police and the community. 
Well, Councilman Don Overcash was the proponent behind this trust commission. However, there were some at tonight's meeting questioning whether Overcash is using it to boost his mayoral bid. Councilor Overcash, did you announce this at a campaign event? I announced uh, I had a town hall meeting, and yes, it's also a campaign event because it's quite known that I'm running for mayor. No details were expressed during the announcement that council had not yet seen yet. The current mayor also questioned Overcash about his relationship, uh, relationship with Police Chief Robert Tyser. Uh, Overcash says he has not discussed the commission with Tyser. Now, as far as the commission, the makeup has not uh, is expected to include members of the community who will present recommendations on how to restore and strengthen trust between citizens and the local government. The defense team for the former cop convicted of murdering George Floyd is requesting a new trial. Derek Chauvin's lawyer laid out a list of complaints, including jury misconduct, witness intimidation, and misconduct by the prosecution. He also said the court abused its discretion in not allowing a change of location or sequestering the jury. Now, the filing did not go into details about jury misconduct, although photos have now come to light of one juror, Brandon Mitchell, wearing a shirt that read, read get your knee off our necks. George Floyd, as you know, died after being pinned down for roughly nine minutes by Derek Chauvin with a knee on his neck. And amid conversations about police reform nationwide, Aurora is looking at ways to improve its response to emergency calls. The city says it's in the final stages of planning a mental health response team. The pilot program would route some calls to clinicians and medical staff better equipped to handle mental health crisis. That's expected to launch this summer. The city is also looking at a community service officer program. The idea there to shift some duties away from patrol officers and give them to a civilian team. All right, Colorado lawmakers, they're adamant 2021 is the year to fix our roads. And there have been roadblocks, but today the governor, along with Democratic state lawmakers, unveiled Colorado's new transportation bill. And for drivers, it's going to cost you about $28 a year. Denver 7 Sloan Dickey takes a look at the plan. I drive all the time and I'm running into potholes. Frustrated and fed up with a bumpy commute, some Coloradans say they're tired of being bounced around. There's a lot of streets that need a lot of work around here. It's to finally fix our damn roads. And Governor Jared Polis, along with a group of state lawmakers, say they're ready to make it happen. On Tuesday, they unveiled a bill they say will fix the roads and bring modern technology to Colorado's infrastructure. We can add real value real value to the lives of every Colorado business and every Colorado family. The goal is to raise $3.1 billion over 11 years to fix roads, update technology, and invest in electric infrastructure for the future of transportation. This is the best, most collaborative effort that I've seen to do so. The money from the improvements will come from new fees, including a fuel charge of two cents per gallon starting in 2022 that will increase annually until we hit eight cents. I mean, eight cents, like, it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but like it does, it does kind of hurt the bottom line. For Benjamin Maliki, who often drives for Postmates, he's concerned that eight cents extra on gas could really hurt. I struggle to make ends meet. The plan also includes a 30 cent fee for rideshare trips, including Uber and Lyft, and a 27 cent fee for food and package deliveries. The sponsors of the bill say it will cost the average Coloradan $28 per year. I think the people should be able to vote on that option. And some Republicans agree, saying Colorado Democrats are trying to go around the state Tabor law, which requires voters to approve a tax increase. Time and time again, we've gone to the voters and say, hey, do you support this kind of tax increase for roads and bridges? And they've consistently said no, no, no. Keep in mind, this is a fee, not a tax. But for Republican Sage Nauman, a spokesperson for the Senate GOP, he called the bill insane, saying it repeals a bipartisan law funding infrastructure passed in 2018. Every time we have a surplus of the general fund, our number one priority is put it into our roads and bridges. We did that two years ago. Democrats say the time to fix our roads is now. This plan truly is better for Denver and it's better for all of Colorado, wherever they, we live, and it begins to pave the way for a transportation system of the 21st century. Drivers tell Denver 7 results are key. I think it's worth asking the people, you know, instead of just implementing it, but if they're going to do it, hopefully we see some results from it. Sloan Dickey, Denver 7. Now the bill still has to make its way through the legislature. The first hearing will be in the Senate Finance Committee. A date has not yet been set. 
Getting people back to work is just one part of Colorado's rebound. Many are struggling to make ends meet and rent. That's a major bill each month. Denver City Council passed a new law requiring a landlord to get a license and supporters say it will protect tenants. Landlords would need to pay an application fee as well as hire an outside inspector to review their property. I think uh, definitely that that fee is not something that the landlords are going to end up paying. They'll find a way to pass that along to the tenants. More than 54,000 rental properties would fall under this new law. The measure will take years to launch. The renting is tough right now. Buying might be worse. And today, a group of Metro mayors met to hear about a plan to boost the amount of affordable housing. The idea is this, change single family zoning to allow duplexes and triplexes. Minneapolis, Minnesota is doing that right now. The mayor there says change is slow, but it is adding housing where it is badly needed. Others worry it make parking problems worse and change the character of these established neighborhoods. I don't see any of these as being affordable, first of all. <laughs> they're like triple the price of everything that they're scraping and putting up and you're increasing the density and the traffic and we're kind of at our, uh, our breaking point now. The mayor of Englewood cautioned that some duplexes in her city already are selling for more than $600,000. First thing you hear is ambulance, ambulance, ambulance. Every parent's nightmare. He was losing a lot of blood. He was turning very uh, pale. It was a gruesome, gruesome thing to see. A gut-wrenching injury while on the road with his baseball team. 500 stitches. I went through all five layers of my skin in my head. Now friends and neighbors are stepping up to the plate and helping this brave 12-year-old recover. It was still a bit cool today, but there are 70s and even 80s on the way.